So, welcome all of you. We have been discussing about heteronuclear correlation experiments. We discussed at stretch in detail about single quantum correlation, where we are going to do an experiment where heteronuclear spins with directly one bond coupled will be correlated. For example, carbon 13 directly bonded to proton or nitrogen 15 directly bonded to proton. See, it is such type of experiment carbon 13 proton HSQC or carbon 13, I am sorry, nitrogen 15 proton HSQC. We understood how we can do that, how we can interpret the spectra, everything. Why we are not going to see the signal because of the long range coupling which are present in the molecule in HSQC. We have calculated the intensity and saw that in such a case, the intensity is too low to be detected in the HSQC. We understood that and we also interpreted a lot of spectra. Then to go further, but if you want to detect correlation the long range correlations like proton coupled to carbon which are 2 bonds or 3 bonds away, 2 j 3 h 3 j ch coupling if it is present. There is an advantage in such cases remotely bonded carbon to proton like quaternary carbon, CO carbons, they also can be detected. So, this type of experiment is called heteronuclear multiple bond correlation experiment. In the heteronuclear multiple bond correlation experiment, what we do is we have a filter for long range correlation delta LR whose value is set for the long range coupling of the order of F i to 10 hertz. And then we will allow only those correlations and the correlation coming because of the long range coupling, I am sorry, one bond couplings are suppressed. And for that we use a filter. There are two types of filters in HMBC. One is filter J accept and J reject. J accept is a filter like delta LR where long range correlations are allowed through whereas one bond correlation like HSQC cross peaks they are all suppressed that is another type of filter. For this we have different types of filters not just one filter that filter can be utilized in such a way we can allow only long range correlation and suppress the one bond correlation. One such filter for that is a bird sequence. I told you about the bird sequence. Bird sequence is a very simple sequence. We, we have we saw in the bird, sequ bird sequence what is going to happen is we have two 90 degree pulses with the separated by a delay and in between 180 pulse on the proton channel and the carbon 13 also we have a 180 pulse and the delay is set to 1 over JCH. In this case what is going to happen is vectorially with the picture we saw that this bulk sequence has an effect only in the carbon 12 attached protons which will selectively invert them whereas this sequence has no effect on carbons carbon 13 attached protons this is what we saw it will selectively invert only that and this is the effect of the bird sequence the effect of the bird sequence is carbon 12 proton is selectively inverted and carbon 13 attached thing will continue to evolve and this is what we saw for carbon 13 one night the chemical sheet will refocus and after a 2 delta period we saw the doublet vectors which was along the y axis for the carbon 13 attached to return to z axis and which is going to be detected by the final proton pulse. So, okay, that is what is going to be detected for carbon 13 spin fired as no effect that is what you should remember. And this is this HMBC sequence with bird. Everything remains same we have LR, we have LR and in between these two LR a bird sequence is put. And bird sequence as I said selectively invert only those protons remotely bonded to carbon 13 2 bonds or 3 bonds away and does not affect the protons which are directly bonded to carbon 13. So, then this achieves the selective refocusing of 1 j ch since only carbon 13 experiencing a 180 pulse, but re defocusing of all long range couplings because 1 j ch in the bird sequence is set for 1 j ch the delay delta. So, it refocuses all the cor cor correlations coming because of NJCH for which both 1 and carbon 13 experience 
net 180 pulses that is what it does it defocuses the remote and then refocuses the 1 by j h of course 1 j c h values can vary it is not constant 1 j c h can be 150 1 200 250 depending upon the type of molecule we are looking at this can affect the efficiency of this approach because we set the delay for one value in the bird, bird element but if the value is different that can cause some issues complications will come so addition of a subsequent 180 degree carbon 13 pulse followed by 1 over 2 this period of delta 1 refocus of only one bond coupling that have passed through the bulb filter this is the another way of doing it what we do is we apply another 180 carbon 13 pulse followed by short one day 1 over 2 jch in the delta which refocuses those one bond coupling which did not get filtered out because of the bulb so that can be done so since 1 jch are filled focus they no longer generate multiple quantum coherences and do not contribute to final spectrum this is what happens why we are not so we, we what is going to happen is we suppress one bond coupling which do not contribute to the spectrum because we use the filters okay there are varieties of filters another thing is phase alternation 180 pulse uh, that is another way we can effective suppression of one bond correlation that is also possible we can do that one more experiment is there another improved version of HMBC it is called constant time experiment constant time HMBC eliminating proton proton coupling in F1 is a very simple thing how do you do do not allow couplings to evolve in the T1 period keep it constant if it does not evolve then it is as good as decoupling removing the 2 j h h for example j h h evolution can be suppressed if the modulation of the signal in t1 is suppressed how do you do that t1 gets modulated we get a say modulated signal you know when we keep incrementing the t1 instead of that we can keep it constant how do we do that experiment but we need to do increment the t1 to get the fid but we do in a very tricky way i will show you that what we do is if the evolution of JCH is there in the T1 dimension, it gives peak broadening in both HMQC and HMBC. Usually visible due to low resolution, normally, I mean, usually not visible due to low resolution, but that gives rest to broadening. But JHH evolution is due to modulation of the signal as a function of the T1 period. Evolved because there is a modulation. What we do is we stop this modulation somehow we keep the evolution constant evolution time constant then we can prevent the jhh modulation for example look at this one constant time period here delta de constant time de de this de this is called constant time period delta ct that is always kept constant the delay is set to a maximum value that T1 period will attain in the experiment. As you know, T1 keeps incrementing from a small value, we can increment to some value. That is the maximum value, keep it constant here. Okay, that is what. And then that is called delta C T T1 maximum, this one. And then this one, 180 pulse, in between we can move it forward or backward, either way. So that this time is always remains constant. You understand? So, we can keep this constant, but we can move this this way or that way. Whereas, this LR is constant, this is before and after that is constant. This is after this one. So, that is a always kept constant. This is a constant time. This is an experiment delta CT minus T1. We can keep increasing it as T1 increases. So, the total period remains constant. We have to maintain this one constant and this one keeps changing that is what we do and this variable delay can be reduced from maximum value to 0. First delta C T we keep it constant and this keeps on subtracting this T1 delay so that it comes to 0 as T1 is incremented from maximum of T1 value to 0 value 
So, delta C t is the one which is maintained and during this process what happens the proton proton coupling evolution do not get modulated at all do not modulate the detected signal. This is one constant time experiment identically we can do this constant time experiment in HMBC that is one way. So, there is another improved version of this constant time all right there are so many such experiments so many modifications are there you know several modified versions of there like impeach is there pendant is there they are all different pulse sequences let us not discuss too much about those things but please remember we can use constant time HMBC we can also use bird element to selectively invert the protons attached to carbon toll all these experiments are improved versions so that one bond one j c h is always suppressed long range n j c h are all allowed through that is the filter which allows and the others are reject filters will stop that with this is the basic idea of any h m b c pulse sequence with this now we will try to understand the interpretation of the peaks in h m b c start with the same molecule which you took earlier we will look at the f 2 coupled h s q c carbon 13 proton coupled where does h m b c gives cross peak we understood h s q c where does it give cross peak both in coupled and decoupled where does h m b c gives we will understand remember in the f 1 dimension if the chemical sheet of c a carbon a is there it gives correlation to the remotely bonded proton not for the one bond that is h s q c you know that. So, we suppress that it gives correlation to long range proton. So, if in the HMBC experiment in the F 1 dimension if you get a chemical shoot for carbon A in the F 2 dimension it pertains to chemical sorry chemical shoot of proton B not proton A this is that this thing this is the difference between HSQC and HMBC in HSQC if it is carbon chemical shift same proton chemical shift which is attached to it. Whereas, in the HMBC if you look at the carbon chemical shift of A it gives correlation to proton which is 2 or 3 bonds away Th here 3 j C A H B this is there C. If you go to carbon B in the F 1 dimension chemical shift is carbon B in the F 2 dimension it is going to be proton chemical shift of A not B. B is C B H B correspond to H S Q C, but now carbon B chemical shift correlates to, correlates to proton A chemical shift which is 3 J C B H A that is the type of peaks we get if you do coupled H M B C. Let us see the spectrum here this is F 2 coupled H M B C. Now, I am seeing the proton carbon chemical shift here go across I am not seeing correlation here that is one bond we are suppressing that that is H S Q C cross peak come here it correlates to the remote proton and this proton is a doublet why because of one bond J C I am sorry not one bond one two three bond J C H coupling three bond carbon proton coupling is there that is a doublet and the center of this doublet correspond to chemical sheet of proton H B what about carbon B where does it correlate carbon B also is a doublet because this is correlating to proton A proton H A as a consequence long range 3 A 3 J C B H A coupling is there. So, that is why that is also a doublet. So, along this axis you get carbon chemical shift along this axis you get proton chemical shift this is the F 2 coupled H M B C spectrum of this molecule. Please see the difference here in H S Q C we are seeing the cross peak of C A to H A C B to H B in the, you are seeing C B to H B here, but in H S Q C that is H S Q in H M B C C A is correlated to H B C B is correlated to H A remotely bonded 2 to 3 bonds away this is what it is the same thing if I do the decoupling what happens I told you HMBC is always recorded in a way which is coupled motion we do not decouple it I told you even if you say it is if you want to do the decoupling how do you understand that 
simply do break the coupling between three bond carbon proton coupling. So it is going to be a singlet. So if this axis is a chemical sheet of carbon A, go vertically up, you get chemical sheet of proton B, not A. Remember, this is A and proton B. Similarly, here chemical sheet of carbon B in this axis it correlates chemical sheet of proton A. So they are cross correlation. See, C B is correlated to H A and C A is correlated to H B in the decoupled. Okay, this is decoupled. What happened proton proton couplings in HMBC? Can it come? Why not? Exactly similar to what we saw in the HSQC. This C A correlates to HB. But what is HB? It is coupled to this. When it is coupled to this, what will happen? It will be a doublet. That will be seen. So, C A is a doublet because of three bond coupling with HB plus it is also a doublet, each doublet is a doublet, each peak of the doublet is a doublet because of coupling with CH proton. This is what is going to happen. So, C A will be a doublet because of 3, 3 J coupling with H B plus doublet of doublet because of H H coupling, that is what it is. This is what is a, in the F 1 dimension, we are going to get chemical shift of A and F 2 dimension it correlates to proton chemical shift of B and it is a doublet of doublet with, with large coupling and small coupling depending upon which is all, they are almost of the similar strength 3 J coupling of carbon proton and 3 J coupling of proton proton. The pattern is a doublet of doublet. If you go to the other carbon, carbon B, it can correlate to proton A 3 bond, but then what about this car, this proton? it is coupled to chem chemically equivalent CH2 protons, then it will become a triplet. So, what will happen? First, this carbon is a doublet because of long range coupling, 3 J coupling and then each length of the doublet is triplet, is a triplet because of coupling with CH2 proton. This is what you are going to get. H A C B is a doublet because of 3 bond coupling and is a triplet because of C H 2 proton. So, in the H M B C spectrum, in the F 1 dimension you get carbon chemical shift of B, but in the F 2 dimension you get proton chemical shift of A because of splitting of 3 J and 3 J H H one, one is a doublet other is a triplet and this is how the pattern you get. Very easy, look at the C A carbon it is correlating to HB proton, center of this correspond to chemical shift of proton HB. It is a long range coupling, one of them may be 3 JCH and then each of them is further split because of HA HB. Okay. So, that is what HB and CH proton, two protons are there, they are this is a doublet of a doublet. Whereas, HA proton, if you look at it, this is correlating to carbon B and the center of this corresponds to H A proton chemical shift. It is a large doublet because of 3 bond C H coupling, but each of this doublet is a triplet 1 to 1, 1 to 1 they are overlap because it is coupled to C H 2 proton. This H A proton is coupled to C H 2 proton. As a consequence, it is going to be doublet of triplet, some overlap is there and you will not be able to see all the multiplicity clearly. This is what you are going to see in the HMBC spectrum. See the difference between HSQC and HMBC. HSQC it was C A was correlating to H A, C B was correlating to HMB, HB here, but in HMBC they are all different. C A correlates to H B, C B correlates to H A, but the multiplicity pattern what you saw in HSQC, what you are seeing in HMBC are similar, only thing is in the HMBC have a long range correlation and HSUC have a one bond correlation and in both the cases if you want proton coupling they all get reflected. This is what basically you have to understand. If you do the decoupling of the same thing, what is going to happen? You remove the carbon proton coupling, but HH coupling is present. So, at the CA chemical shift you have chemical shifts at the CA it is correlating to 
C B, I am sorry H B which is a doublet because of this. You are removing this coupling but this is present that is what happens is a doublet. Same way here at the C B ch ch chemical shift which is correlating to H A that you are breaking but this will be a triplet because of this that is seen here that is what is seen. This is the decoupled HMBC. This is what we are going to see. Then what about the terminal peaks like we saw in HSQC? We can try to interpret that. In the, if you go to the CH2 carbon, CH2 can correlate to CA proton, um, CA carbon and see CH2 is this is correlating to HA, this is HA cable, this is the carbon of this one it correlate to HA proton and each of them is a one bond of course CH coupling is also there and because it is F2 coupled you also have HH coupling, HH coupling is also seen, HH coupling is a doublet because of this proton that you should remember we are seeing this carbon which has a long range correlation to this and also this has a is a, this CH2 carbon the H proton is a doublet because of HA this is what you are going to see. Similarly HB along this axis you get carbon chemical shift exactly from the center if you go you get proton chemical shift. Again CB you are correlating with this proton we are considering is correlating to I am sorry this carbon correlating to this proton and there is a doublet because of that and that is what you are going to see. Of course, if you do the decoupling, you will break the, break the carbon proton couplings, but you retain proton proton couplings that is what happens. You are retaining the HH coupling here, both the cases. In both this carbon will be a doublet, and this carbon is a doublet because of this. So, HH couplings are retained. So, we will look at the realistic example of HMBC spectrum of ethyl acetate. This is a simple molecule. Let us look at this. The exactly like we analyzed HSQC, same molecule I am taking, we will analyze the HMBC spectrum. How do you analyze HMBC spectrum here? Start with CA3, okay. CA3 protons, which is marked 1, H1, it is a long range correlating, correlating with the CH2 carbon. These protons are correlating to this carbon that is two bond coupling. What will happen? That will become a doublet. So, we are seeing this one proton for correlating to the CH2 carbon is a doublet. Then what will happen? Each line of the doublet is split because of this CH2 protons into a triplet. This is going to be a doublet of triplet, but you see this is a doublet and you will see 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2 triplets are there which are overlapped here. We will not see that okay and because of that it appears like a quadrant. You have seen this multiplicity pattern when we were analyzing the proton spectrum. So, this is a doublet and each of the doublet is a triplet because of CH2 protons okay. You go to the next one. Next one is CH2 proton this is H3 this CH2 proton can have a long range correlation to what? This carbon CH3 carbon it will make it a doublet yes, but then each of this doublet is a quartet because of three equivalent protons. So, you will get doublet of a quartet and four lines see it is doublet is here and each line is a 1 3 3 1 1 3 3 1 1 3 3 1 overlapped here it look, looks like a pentet that is what happens it is doublet of a quartet is overlapped and appears like a pentet. And also if you see the CH2 carbon this I am sorry this CH2 proton is also correlating to CO carbon 1 2 3 bonds 3 bond correlation is there. What will happen here this is going to be because of CH2 protons have a long range correlation to C4 it is a doublet first and then each doublet line 
is split into quartet because of the coupling with CA3 protons. See again, you get a pentet like you saw in the previous example, like here. Again, it is a pentet because this is the, these two is correlated to this, and this is also correlated to this. In both the cases, this proton will split this into a quartet. Exactly what you are seeing. Again, it is a quartet where I'm sorry, where is, where some of the lines are overlapped here. All right. What is the next one? Next one, if you see, we have to look at the other carbon, CH2 carbon. See CH2 carbon. This CH2 carbon, and we have CH3 protons here. Let us consider these protons. It can have two bond correlation with CO carbon. That's all. When it has a CO two bond correlation, what it will do? It will become a doublet. Okay. That's all. And no other coupling is there. HH coupling cannot be seen because nothing is there. This is not split by any other protons. So CO carbon, because of this, is going to be a simply a doublet. CA3 protons have a long range carrier with CO carbon and it is a doublet. Simply by using the all this information, we can identify all the cross peaks. So now we know how to analyze coupled and decoupled HMBC spectrum of one of the molecules you have taken. We will take another example, a decoupled HMBC spectrum of this molecule. Now we will start analyzing the decoupled spectrum of this molecule. Its structure is given here. We will look at the molecule and we can even get the structure of the molecule if you analyze HMBC cross peaks. All the carbons have been numbered. Look at carbon 2. This carbon 2 shows two bond correlation to proton 3, 1, 2 bond. See, so, it is carbon 2 here, proton 3, which is proton 3 here. See, so, carbon 2 is here. So, it is showing three bond correlation. That is what it is. And C3, carbon 3, shows two bond correlation to proton 2. That is all. Carbon 3 showing to carbon 2, carbon 2 is showing to proton 3. See, very interesting. Carbon 3 showing to proton 2, carbon 2 is show, showing to proton 3. Cross, there is a cross correlation is there between the two groups. Fine. Further, you see C4 is correlating to H5, 2 bond correlation here. C4 is correlating to H5. Also, H5 is correlating to C4. These are isolated things. But if you look at one more carbon is there, which is not attached to the proton, that is CO carbon. The CO carbon shows three correlations. One is this one, C1 to H4, C1 to H4. Other is C1 to H3, long range correlation, three bond. And C1 to H2 here, two bond. This is a very interesting thing. What did we understand? We saw only two correlations for this C3 to H2 and H2 to C, C3 to H2 and C2 to H3. Similarly, C4 to H5 and H5 to uh, C5 to H2, the H4. These correlations we observed. But in between, there is a CO group. This CO group correlates with this. Uh, this proton, this proton and this proton and there is no other correlation of this to this carbon and this to this carbon. All this observation what do you understand? It conclusively tells you that C double bond O, o this group is sitting between H2 and H4 groups between this and this. From the uh, correlations we observed in HMBC, we can arrive at this structure very easily take the correlations, simply place the correlation what we observed and we know this is the structure of the molecule. Because this if it has to give correlation to this, this and this, this has to be between these two, it cannot be for the terminal group and these two is 
we saw this is correlating to this and this is correlated to this. Similarly, this is correlating to this, this is correlating to this proton. With all this knowledge, we can get the structure. So, you remember how HMBC, because of the remote correlation for the protons to the carbons which are not attached to protons, CO or Ipso carbons are in some carbons which are not attached to protons, quaternary carbons, we can even get the structure. We can completely even place the carbon which are not attached to proton also. So, that is the advantage of HMBC. It gives correlation to carbons which are not attached to proton through remote protons. So, we will take a simple example and analyze the 600 megahertz COC, HSQC and HMBC spectra of ethyl ethoxy propylate. This is a simple molecule, this is a COC spectrum. COC spectrum identifies, you know how to analyze, start with one tablet, one of the high di di diagonal peak, complete the square. Ca start with diagonal, complete the square. Start with this, complete the square. So, COC identified three groups of spin systems. Fantastic. Go to multiple irritated HSQC, you get three groups of CH2s, red color, negative sign. We, there are, th I am sorry, four, I think, four are here. And only two CH3s, which are add proton with a positive sign. These are all negative sign. That also fine. You can assign these things very easily. Then do the decoupled version of the same thing, uh, HMBC, interesting thing you will see, C5 carbon gives long range correlation to three different protons, C5, C5, C5 to H6, H3 and H4, C5 gives to H3, H4 and H6, very interesting. And C5, H6, 3 bond, all this the correlation we are seeing. If you expand this version of the same region and if you look at the correlation, we had C6 H giving correlation to H7 and C2 H1 and remember C6 is giving correlation only to H7 and C7, I mean, I mean H6 correlates only to C7. This is a very interesting thing, we should see that. This is what is happening because H, H6 is correlated to C7. H7 correlate only to C6. We can see carefully the peaks here. This puts CH2, CH3 as terminal group. H1 correlates to C2 only, this H1, only to this and no other correlation. That gives me an idea that CH3 is a terminal group there. The C7, H7, H, I told you, you know C6, H7, C7, H6, that is form one correlation and C2, H1 is also there. There are three correlations we get from this graph, which puts me this is one group and this is another group. All right, we can continue this further. We can see H2 correlates to C1 and C3, and H3 correlates to C2, C4, and C5. And with all these observed correlations like this C5 3 bond, C5 3 2 bond, C5 H4 2 bond, and these 2 bond 3 bond correlations, this is the structure you are going to get. We can place it easily. So, using HMBC, we can get even the structure of the molecules. Long range correlation gives you, puts you the carbons which are not attached to the proton in a proper place in the structure. Why? Understanding the correlation of that carbon with the remote protons. This is what we wanted to see now. So, today we discussed about in this class, lot about HMBC and HMBC pulse sequences. And I told you HMBC gives rise to, allows only long range correlation, suppresses one bond like HSQC cross peak by using filters and we can has, we have different types of filters and one such uh, prominent one I told you is a bulb filter. We can also do constant time experiment to prevent the evolution of HH couplings like that. So, the, all these things experiment varieties of experiments are possible. Finally, I just wanted to tell you by, by using bulb sequence also we can uh, do, uh, as you use that as a filter and we can allow only long range correlations. And we took a lot of examples, we understood how to interpret the coupled and decoupled HMBC spectrum of some important molecules, how HH couplings are reflected in the spectrum, how they can be, CH coupling can be removed by decoupling, all those things. And we took simple example to show that one or two examples of the molecules and by the looking at the correlations, we can even play some of the molecules, some of the functional groups like C double bond O or quaternary carbons in a proper place based on its correlation with other protons which are remotely bonded. So, we took a couple of examples, I am going to stop here and we will continue with this HMBC little bit more and then go to it all to the different topic.
tomorrow in the next class. So I am going to stop here. Thank you very much.